Hello and welcome all. Before construction of any type of structure, either it is residential, commercial, industrial or any, understanding of a soil is a must. This is general Popart. Let us move further to introduction to geotechnical engineering. In this video, we are going to discuss brief idea about different modules, applications as well as different technicalities of the subject. Geology deals with formation of rocks and study of rocks. Soil mechanics deals with different laws of mechanics and hydraulics to the structures and foundation engineering deals with different design and analysis of footings. So this is how geotechnical engineering is comprised of three different things that is geology, soil mechanics and foundation engineering. So geotechnical engineering is made up of seven modules. First module deals with different types of soils, their properties and interrelationships between them. Second module permeability and seepage. It deals with capability of earth or soil to pass the water through that. In the third module, we are going to discuss compaction and consolidation of soil. Now, compaction means by the time the soil gets compacted and it gets smaller than it was earlier. We will explore these in the third module. In the fourth module, stress distribution, we will understand distribution of a load or a stress in the soil. In fifth module, we are going to discuss shear strength of soil. Now, as the stress is distributed in the soil, soil will be resisting the load and that is due to shear strength of soil. In next module, module 6, that is earth pressure and stability of slopes, we are going to discuss pressure exerted by earth or we can say soil and we will check stability of manual or man-made as well as natural slopes. In the last module, we are going to have an introduction about different types of foundation as well as we will find out bearing capacity of the soil. Before learning any new subject, you must be having question that what are the scopes, what are the applications of this subject. So let us go through that. Scopes are applications of geotechnical engineering. Shallow and deep foundation. So by learning geotechnical engineering, you will get the knowledge about shallow and deep foundation, their design, construction and their bearing capacity. Next is retaining structures. Now to retain soil or water, you must know retaining structures like wall of a dam. So you have to learn geotechnical engineering. Next is stability of slopes. We know that in India there are too many slopy regions and to work, to construct there, we have to know stability of them. Next is underground structures. Now, tunnels as well as different underground structures are to be constructed in hard situations, not in normal situations. So, you must know that. Next is pavements. Now, pavements are of two types, that is flexible pavement and rigid pavement. Here, in this picture, you are seeing first image of flexible pavement and bottom image of rigid pavement. Now we can say Dama road that is a flexible pavement and RCC road that is a rigid pavement. We will get to know further this in this subject. And next is earthen dams. Now you are seeing the image of a dam which is made up of available materials near that site that is made up in very low budget comparatively. So we will also know the knowledge 
for at the dams through this subject so these are basic scopes of geotechnical engineering you can apply the knowledge in these particular areas through geotechnical engineering moving further origin and nature of soil here we will understand geological cycle soil is formed by geological cycle it is consisting of four stages stage 1 called erosion in this stage in first stage soil get eroded from the hilly regions slopy regions then it gets in particulate matter and it gets transported to some different place then it gets depositioned from that place to another place in that particular matter form and then again it gets upheaval through wind water ice and gravity and that is how this cycle works and soil is formed let us move further weathering so this integration of rock mass to particulate matter is known as weathering weathering is further divided into two types physical weathering and chemical weathering physical weathering is also known as mechanical weathering let us understand them physical weathering so rock disintegrates into smaller fragments now this integration into smaller fragments makes them transportable then the soil will be transported and then deposition and then upheaval that is how the soil is formed next point for physical weathering is the properties of that soil do not change so by physical weathering properties of the soil do not change third point that is the cohesion less kind of soil is generated through physical or mechanical weathering you can see the picture of gravel and sand you must have seen gravels at river banks and you must have seen sand at beaches let us move further now due to weathering and temperature changes expansion and contraction of soil happens and due to that it gets disintegration and then soil is formed further due to physical weathering now in cold climates freezing and thawing happens now what is freezing and thawing in cold climates the water or the water particles in the rock mass gets freezed and then due to that freezing and thawing process the soil or the rock mass gets disintegrated and due to this disintegration the soil is formed the roots of the trees growing in the cracks and fissures of the rocks gets bigger by the time and it causes disintegration of the soil as water wind ice and gravity move over the soil surface or rock surface it gets disintegration and scar and abrasion happens due to that again weathering takes place now we have seen all the aspects of physical or mechanical weathering let us move further to chemical weathering in chemical weathering the chemical processes happen in mineral structure of the rock for an example if there is a diamond or any type of rock in the mineral structure of that the chemical processes will take place by the time and those chemical processes will lead to chemical weathering chemical weathering will get your soil property changed that means the soil property will be changed during chemical weathering after chemical weathering soil properties will be changed now due to chemical weathering cohesive soils are generated 
Now, you must be having a question that what is cohesive soils? Cohesive soils are nothing but the soils in which in their soil particles there is a bonding or there is a cohesion force. Cohesion and adhesion are two different things. Cohesion that means if they are of same item and they are getting attracted that is cohesion and if they are soil particles of different item different type of soil and they get attracted that is adhesion so here cohesive type of soil will be generated cohesive means similar kind of particles similar type of soil particles gets attracted that is how cohesive soil is made now cohesive soil like silt and clay you can see the picture of silt and clay are made up now hydration and hydrolysis processes take place in chemical weathering now hydration and hydrolysis are simple processes in hydration and hydrolysis the minerals of rock are combined with water and the chemical process happens that is hydration and hydrolysis same way solution and leaching in this water combines with solubles which can be soluted in the water now by combining with solubles the process takes place that is solution and leaching moving further to carbonation now in carbonation process co2 will be combining with minerals of rock and there will be a process called carbonation through this process carbonic acid will be out in the air same way oxidation will take place in minerals of the rock there will be process of oxidation with o2 combining with minerals so these are chemical processes through which chemical weathering take place after this much of explanation you must be clear about the difference between physical weathering and chemical weathering in physical weathering soil properties do not change after physical weathering where in chemical weathering soil properties gets changed in physical weathering there are physical weathering process i mean physically the soil gets processed where in chemical weathering there are only chemical processes which happens in the soil structure only or minerals only furthermore in physical weathering cohesion less soils are generated like gravels and sand we have seen the examples of that in chemical weathering the cohesive type of soil is generated like silt and clay so you must know the basic difference between these two processes in next lecture we will discuss about further more details of origin and nature of soil thank you